गीतरीतचयनापि भक्तिभावेन चेतस वीरशस्त्रपुराणनीतनानितनि सर्वशः रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भगवत गीता एज इट इज चैप्टर 15 टेक्स्ट नंबर 5 श्री गुरु जी ने तनन सो फर्स्ट वी मस्ट अनाउंस दैट टुमारो एट 6:00 This day high forever kirtan begins. <laughs> And it will last until 8:30. So someone should tell Gadukananda Das. Gadukananda. Okay. So <clears throat> Now we are reading Bhagavad Gita chapter 15 text 5 in which Lord Krishna explains the process of surrender In Sofia some days ago I referred to the same verse. Explaining that to surrender to Krishna is not uh, something that is done whimsically. I told this uh, it's actually a joke from Bengal. There's a funny character that is always appearing in jokes whose name is Gopal Ban. Gopal Ban. So in this joke Gopal Ban uh, received um a quantity of flour for making bread so the person who gave him the flour said now gopal this is coming to you by the grace of god so you should use this in the service of Lord Govinda Lord Krishna But Gopal was thinking otherwise That if this comes to me freely then I can do with it as I like and so he made began to make many plans for this flower He planned to sell some part of it. And use the other part for sense gratification. He had no no plan at all to offer anything to Krishna. <coughs> so he had received this flower in a basket which he was carrying on his head and as he was going down the road towards his home and of course thinking he had so many plans going in his mind Uh, uh how much profit he would make a big wind came and blew all the flower out of the basket 
И както си ходил с кош на главата и си правил планове колко ще спечели от брашното, изведнъж се полил много силен вятър и издухал цялото брашно от това коша. So he turned and he looked, he saw all this flower blowing like a big white cloud across the field. And then he, he folded his hands and said, Oh Govinda, please take my offering. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is not the process of surrender. <laughs> that we wait until everything is taken away from us. And then we say, yes, Krishna, it is yours. <laughs> Rather, we see in this verse, Lord Krishna is giving a very uh, exact step-by-step -step process how we must willingly surrender ourselves to Krishna, accept the process of purification, and in this way become qualified to go back home, back to Godhead. Nirmana, one has to become free of false pride. One has to become free from moha, illusion. And uh, sangha dosha, this means bad association. One has to become situated in spiritual knowledge and be disassociated from karma, lust. And he should not be influenced by the dualities of happiness and distress. Mm. And he must be amudha. It means unbewildered. So a person with these qualities, he knows how to surrender to Krishna. So Srila Prabhupada many times said that Bhagavad Gita was not spoken for lazy fools. Lord, what does Lord Krishna say? He says, Evam param para praptam imam rajarshayo vidhu that down the parampara, this knowledge comes to the Rajarshis. That means the saintly leaders of the world. Mm -hmm. The word Rajarshi is composed of two words, Raja and Rishi. So Raja means, who knows? King. And Rishi means? Great sage, yes. So, uh, Lord Krishna gives examples. Imam Vishvate Proptam. Uh, he says, I instructed this science of Bhagavad Gita to Vivashvan, the sun god. Mm -hmm. So Vivashvan, he is the leader of a great dynasty of saintly kings, the Surya Vangsa. Mm -hmm. uh, and Vivashvan Manava Prahu, this Vivashvan, the Lord of the Sun, he instructed 
uh, Manu, the father of mankind, in the same knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. And Manu Ikshvakave Bravit, and Manu in turn instructed King Ikshvaku. Who is a great ancient ruler of this whole planet Earth. So, uh, here are examples we just heard. Uh, Viva Shvan, Manu, Ikshvaku. <coughs> These saintly kings, they knew how to surrender to Krishna. And because they were rulers of the world, that meant they surrendered uh, all of their kingdom, all of their subjects, all of their wealth, everything to the service of the Lord. Hmm. But now the Rajarshis are gone from this world. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Mm -hmm. Because this higher class of men, royal class and priestly class, they gave up the strict worship of the deity of the Lord. As Srila Prabhupada explained, if you don't use your wealth and opulence to decorate the form of the Lord, instead you use it just to decorate your own body, then gradually all your power, all your opulence will be finished. Yes. You see, if one uh, thinks of the deity as a stone and lose, in this way uh, makes offenses to the Lord, then one places oneself and his whole dynasty, everything, in a very dangerous position. Just like there were some frogs who worshipped a big stone. So, <coughs> they're foolish frogs. Uh, so blindly, they were worshipping this stone. One young frog was a little rebellious. And said to himself, Why these frogs have for so many generations been bowing down to this rock? What did this rock ever do for us? So one day, while all the frogs were gathered in front of the rock, praying, this young frog, he jumped over the rock. All the other frogs said, Hey! You committed a great offense. You jumped over God. And the little frog said, If this was God, then how could I jump over? <laughs> so the frogs 
began to talk, or they began to croak among themselves. Yes, yes, he must be right. <laughs> <laughs> So then they were wondering if this if this rock is not God, then who shall we worship? And the little frog, he reasoned that we must worship an entity who is so tall that we cannot jump over him. So then the frog thought, yes, good idea. And we know there is one big, tall, white bird with a very long beak. We, we'll never jump over him, so we should go to him and offer obeisances. <laughs> So this, uh, what do you call it, crane or stork, whatever, uh, stork, yes, <laughs> was very happy to see all the frogs coming. <laughs> they were all coming in a big group and they were chanting mantras and <laughs> bowing down. He was very satisfied. <laughs> oh, for so long I had to chase these frogs here and there. Now I can just eat them all in one big meal. So within a few seconds he swallowed all those frogs. Mm -hmm. So when uh, we think of the deity as just a stone, then we become like those frogs. See, then one commits offenses against the Lord, neglects his worship. And then is swallowed up by Maya. Uh, there is a place in France uh, called Versailles. It's a very, very opulent garden that was built by a famous king. So there is some fabulous palace there and very beautiful grounds. This king, uh, Louis the Fourteenth, I think, he was known as the Sun King because he was so opulent. But he was like a frog. Uh, simply proud of his own opulence, no idea of service to the Lord. And although he built this wonderful place, it was only for sense gratification. And very soon, just a couple generations later, this royal dynasty, French dynasty of kings, they had their heads chopped off. It's like what, the frogs swallowed by the stork. <laughs> <laughs> these kings, these this royal class, they all had their heads put under the guillotine and the blade dropped. And the, the head fell in the basket and then the head was shown to the crowds. 
съгласник от гелотината и главите им панели в Коше и Коше бил показан на публика си. So now the world is full of lazy and crazy fools. <coughs> But even this lazy class, they can become Rajarishi. They can become qualified if they follow Lord Krishna's instructions and learn to surrender to Him. So, Srila Prabhupada has given us the process. It's a two-fold process. Bhagavad Vidi, Pantra Triki Vidi. Bhagavad Vidi. This means three things hearing, chanting, remembering about Krishna. And Pancha Triki Vidi means the deity worship. Padasevanam, Vandanam, Archanam, serving the lotus feet, offering prayers, performing puja. Offering prayers, serving lotus feet. Yes. So Srila Prabhupada said on these two tracks, the Bhagavad Vidi and the Panchatriki Vidi, our movement moves forward like a train. Mm-hmm. And by strictly uh, keeping these two vidis, vidi means method. So by strictly keeping these two methods of worship uh, in our temples, the devotees can learn to surrender to Krishna. Mm. The devotees develop the qualities listed in this verse. Mm-hmm. So, again, this is not uh, surrendering to Krishna, becoming qualified to go back home, back to Godhead. It's not something whimsical. It does not just happen by accident. There is a method, a process, a vidhi. Mm-hmm. As we were mentioning this morning, Bhagavatam says, Taj Joshanat Asuv Apavarga Vartmani. To make progress on this path, Taj Joshanat, one has to cultivate. One has to work at developing these qualities. Mm-hmm. You see? If we are... Uh, if we maintain this... La- the lazy attitude that predominates in this Kali Yuga... Then what will we obtain? You know the story of the ant, the ant and the grasshopper. Grasshopper. Uh, this insect that jumps. Huh? So, you know that story? No? So the, the ant was working very hard. 
gathering things, gathering little grains and bits of sugar, and bringing it to his hole and storing it away. And the grasshopper was laying around under the tree, fiddling on its legs, making sound. <laughs> <laughs> and the grasshopper would see the ant going by and say, Hey, look, it's summertime, weather's so nice. Why are you working so hard? Stop a while. Have some fun with me. And the ant said, No, no, no. While the weather is good, we have to work hard. Because winter will come. We have to prepare for winter. And the grasshopper laughed. What are you talking about? What is winter? Come on, the sun is shining. <laughs> so the ant said, anyway, don't waste my time. So some months passed. The weather began to get cold. The sky was gray. The wind, icy wind started to blow. Uh, so the grasshopper was getting very cold. Uh, and then he saw some big white snowflakes blowing in the wind. Oh, what is this? Mm -hmm. And then he went to the hole of the ant and he was knocking. Mr. Ant! Let me, let me in, it's cold out here. Meanwhile, the ant was in his warm hole and he had a big stock of food stuff. <laughs> And he said, I'm very sorry, Mr. Grasshopper, but there's no room for you here. I worked the whole summer just to store away enough for me. I advised you to also work and save. But you were a lazy man. <laughs> so I cannot help you now. So the poor grasshopper lamented so bitterly. There was no no more happy music, only crying. <laughs> So similarly, this Krishna consciousness is serious business. The service that we're performing now for Krishna is the payment for our ticket back home, back to Godhead. Mm -hmm. So if we don't work hard and pay this ticket, we will also be left crying like Mr. Grasshopper in the material world. Mm. 
So yes, surrender to Krishna. That's what Krishna says. Sarva Dharma Parichija Mamikam Sharana Praja. Give everything up, just surrender to me. But we must know how to do this. Mm-hmm. It's not just a matter of going, ah, I'm surrendered. <laughs> Ah, Gadukananda! <laughs> Gadukananda Das. <laughs> ah, Hare Krishna. Of course. Thank you, thank you. Uh, now we find it uh, really in boxes and missiles. Very good. Please sit down. So, are there any questions? Yes. The disciple told me that Hare Krishna must have seen how he, how is, what, in what manner he did this. And I don't know what, what is the meaning of that, what he did, because this is natural for us. Mm-hmm. Well, <coughs> there are two things, anukarana and anusharana. One means to imitate, the other means to follow. We should follow. Uh, imitation means to Prabhupada always gives the example of the imitators of Lord Shiva so Lord Shiva is a great devotee and he has his sampradaya, the Rudra Sampradaya. He teaches Vaishnava Dharma. For instance, in Srimad Bhagavatam, there is the chapter called uh, Chanting the Song Taught by Lord Shiva. Chanting the song taught by Lord Shiva. So in this song, Lord Shiva offers many nice prayers to the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. So we should follow Lord Shiva's example as a devotee. Follow his instructions. But we should not imitate him. Lord Shiva drank an ocean of poison. How will you imitate that? Mm-hmm. Some of his so-called followers, um, they smoke ganja or marijuana. <clears throat> and they think by this smoking of marijuana they are having some mystical relationship with Lord Shiva. But they're simply becoming covered by the Tama Guna, ignorance. Mm-hmm. Because they're not uh, following what Lord Shiva wants to teach, wants us to learn. They're superficially imitating. Similarly, 
the Acharya, the spiritual master, in order to preach, <clears throat> he accepts opulence, he may accept many disciples. But we should not imitate this. Hmm? Thinking that, oh, Srila Prabhupada, he had in Los Angeles, uh, his disciples got for him a Rolls Royce car. So in order to be uh, a preacher, guru, I should also have Rolls Royce car. This is the qualification. That's imitation. Following means uh, you follow Prabhupada's example. Uh, his self-sacrifice, his giving all of his energy, everything to the service of his spiritual master. Preach as he preached. This is following. Any other question? Yes, Gore. What is the what? What is the uh, what's the problem if I have difficulty in putting into practice what I have learned about what understood this question. What is the problem when one has difficulty in putting into practice what he has learned? The problem is that you haven't learned. Just like if you are learning piano, play concert piano. And you're practicing, practicing at home, playing Tchaikovsky's 40-second <laughs> symphony. <laughs> and then the big day comes, you are supposed to play in the concert hall. And the whole hall fills up, 2,000 people. <laughs> and then you sit down at the piano and you begin to play and it's boink, 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 boink. <laughs> <laughs> All the notes are wrong, horrible sound. <laughs> so what does that mean? <laughs> it means you didn't learn how to play. <laughs> That's all it means. <laughs> so learning means to put into practice. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yes? Uh, 
uh, she didn't uh, met in another place this uh, or who uh, who are they or who are these incarnations are described in the eleventh canto of Shrimad Bhagavatam. So the white incarnation is called Shukla. The uh, red incarnation is called Rakta. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course the black incarnation that is Lord Krishna and the golden incarnation is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. To steal them. And when we come to Romania, Bulgaria, we see wasting, stealing, very prominent. <laughs> this is the culture. <laughs> this is the habit. Of course, it is going on all over the world. And it must be stopped. These offenses to the Supreme Lord must be stopped. That is Srila Prabhupada's mission. He said that the principle of his mission, this Krishna consciousness movement, the principle is utility. To utilize everything properly in Krishna's service. People have become so foolish. They do not know how to use anything properly anymore. Mm -hmm. I was telling last night, uh, Ruchir Avatar Prabhu, how there's this new law in Bulgaria. You cannot take diesel out of the country in canisters in your car. So, so last time when we went to Greece a month ago, we didn't know this. This is a new law. And when we were on the border at Kulata, the, the men said, you cannot take this. We had 70 liters of diesel. And they said, you, you cannot take it out. And we sa- I said, well, we can pay tax. No. <laughs> So then what to do? Finally, we just had to pour it on the ground. So they were satisfied. That was good. (laughs) (laughs) This means no brain. (laughs) So with such people in charge... No wonder there's no water and no cooking gas. <laughs> no wonder nothing works. <laughs> huh? They don't know how to utilize Krishna's energy properly. So that is the principle of the Krishna consciousness movement. Utility. The basis of this utility, Prabhupada said, is Srila Prabhupada's books. Books are the basis. So, in other words, when we speak of using everything in Krishna's service, basically we're speaking of distributing, using everything to distribute Srila Prabhupada's books.
And the essential purpose of this is to preach, to propagate Krishna consciousness throughout society. Preaching is the essence. And you, uh, uh, purity is the force. Hmm? That is the power by which all this will be accomplished. And that again brings us back to the first point, utility. What does purity mean? It means using everything, this body, this mind, everything, all resources, simply in Krishna's service, never for sense gratification. So if we cultivate this fourfold mission of Śrīla Prabhupāda's movement, then in time, since we're speaking of time, then in time even, even this hellish place will become like Vaikuntha. <laughs> 